So there it is guys, Battlefield 5 has recently been revealed to the masses, and there's been a hell of a lot of information provided to us, giving us an indication of what's on the horizon. Along with developer interviews, a trailer was released, and hidden within said trailer was a pretty big pile of hints on the game's new mechanics, giving us a lot of exciting things to think about, despite the trailer doing a bit of a poor job of addressing them. And although there wasn't really a massive amount of gameplay shown off at the reveal, we now know more about what's to come, including the progression systems, personal customization options, game modes, and so on. It's a bloody big list. If you don't know anything about the reveal events, or if your brain found it a bit hard to digest all of that information, then this video has been made especially for you, as I'm basically going to be running over the key things we found out about Battlefield 5 during the reveal, and laying out all of the main facts one by one, summarising what we know in a way that's easy to follow. So I'm going to get the obvious thing out of the way with first. The biggest question that's been on everyone's minds for the past few months is probably Battlefield 5 setting, and I can confirm that the rumours are all true, and we are indeed going back to the Second World War, something the Battlefield franchise hasn't done for quite a while now. Not exactly a massive surprise considering the last game was based around World War 1, and I guess this leads on quite nicely over to the next big phase of warfare that the world had to endure. Plus it also gives us access to a huge pile of historical weapons and vehicles, providing us with more variety in what we can use as we play. Unlike another certain big shooter game that's decided to drop its campaign in favour of following the Battle Royale trend instead, you know, Black Ops 4, Battlefield 5 will be retaining its single player mode, and more specifically, it will be bringing back the War Stories type of structure that we saw in Battlefield 1, focusing on multiple characters across the globe and telling us their own individual stories during the war from self-contained narratives. This is going to let us experience the Second World War through the eyes of different people, helping to give us more variety in the places we visit, and portraying the conflict through unique perspectives. DICE teased us with some information on one of the stories, saying how it'll take place in Norway in 1942, and feature a female resistance fighter trying to save her family. And several other stories are going to be told by other characters that are all inspired by real life events. Now typically you'd expect a World War II game to mainly take place in, say, Normandy, Belgium, Berlin, and of course, Omaha Beach to resemble that iconic shoreline fight from Saving Private Ryan. But the fact is, the Second World War shook the whole world, and ignited conflict in places you probably didn't even know about. And it's these lesser known conflicts that DICE are pushing forwards into the limelight, and focusing on exploring in Battlefield 5. I'm not saying we won't be seeing any of those large scale iconic battles in the game, but there's going to be a lot more emphasis on the unseen, untold and unplayed events of World War 2, with the locations set in new and unexpected places that we don't normally see or hear of. Some of these places, which were mentioned and can be seen in some of the concept art, include the harsh environment of North Africa, Rotterdam which has been ripped apart because of the conflict, mountain ranges with snowy landscapes, and Norway which has already been hinted on. And it's likely that some of these locations will feature in both single player and multiplayer, with many more unique locations still to be revealed over time. If you want to team up with a few mates in a co-op mode, then you'll be pleased to know that the new combined arms mode is going to allow up to four people to play together. You'll be dropped down behind enemy lines as a paratrooper, whose mission is to stay undetected while travelling to a key objective, and you'll need to work well with each other if you want to survive. Supplies are limited, and you'll need to collect equipment and use available resources to carry out the tasks ahead. We didn't hear tons of information about how the mode is going to work, but DICE stated that it sits somewhere between single player and multiplayer, so it's a good place to get to grips with the game before diving headfirst into that competitive multiplayer mode and missions will be generated to create dynamic objectives, which will help to diversify the mode and make it feel a bit different each time it's played. So some of the fan favourite multiplayer game modes like Conquest, Team Deathmatch and Domination will be returning to Battlefield 5, which isn't really a massive surprise. And the well received operations mode introduced in Battlefield 1 will also be coming back too, but it's gone through a number of big changes, and it's now called Grand Operations, featuring 64 players battling it out over four fictional in-game days. There's still the core concept of having both the attacking and defending teams, and the goal of having the attackers push the defenders back to conquer the map and move it into the next one is still there too. But instead of having to continuously take over flags to progress the match on, attackers will now be given specific objectives to carry out which change over the four in-game days, and depending on how well you achieve said objective might impact your resources for completing the next giving you a bit of an advantage or a disadvantage. If the match hasn't ended by the fourth day, then you'll enter a sudden death kind of game called Last Stand, where each player has only one life, one magazine or clip of bullets, and where their effects will be cranked up to the max, making the match seem even more dramatic. 
It all sounds extremely tense and very tactical, with players trying to survive and take on the opposition with limited resources. Now, Battlefield games have always been known for their high levels of destruction, realistic physics, and those often hilarious ragdoll effects, something that Battlefield 5 thankfully won't be getting rid of. Not only will all of that sort of stuff be coming back to the next game, but it's going to be better and more realistic than ever, with high calibre rounds penetrating through materials more effectively than weaker ones, and if you fire off a tank shell at a house that passes through the wall and detonates within the house, then the building will be destroyed from the point of that detonation, blowing the house up from the inside out with the destruction happening independently, rather than being tied to an animation, making it all seem a lot more lifelike. So basically, more realistic destruction. Players can be pushed back from some non-fatal explosives, helping to create even more immersion with the action taking place, and when someone is shot and killed, their bodies are going to react to the environment in a realistic way, rolling down a steep hill, floating in water, or falling into and knocking over furniture in a house. So lots of little touches there that are designed to create a sense of realism in the world around. Speaking of little details to improve immersion, character models will now also move around the environment in a more realistic fashion too, wading around in waist height water at a slower pace than normal, slipping on mud or tripping over rocky terrain, and even visibly moving tall grass and bushes when you pass through, which could potentially give you position away to the enemy team. The overall movement system has been improved, allowing you to roll around on the floor and look in any direction fluidly whilst being ready to fire. Crouch sprinting is also now a thing, allowing you to move a bit faster whilst keeping lower to the ground, plus you'll also have more freedom to fire when mantling ledges too, keeping you engaged in the fight at all times. Another feature is the ability to jump through windows and do a combat roll when you land on the floor, and you'll now be able to drag a down teammate out in the open to safety, to revive them from behind cover. Something that'll be pretty useful due to the fact that revives now take a longer time to perform. To coincide with the whole immersion thing that DICE seem to be pushing in Battlefield 5, there's a lot of gameplay changes that are going to stir up the traditional formula, creating something a lot more tactical in the process. Instead of jumping behind cover to replenish your health to the max after taking 5 bullets to the chest, you'll now only regain a certain amount of health back, which can only be fully replenished with the help of a medic. Ammo will also be in shorter supply too, so you'll need to rely on those support players to lay down the ammo pouches more often. And this also means that you'll need to think more about how you're going to tackle an objective, having limited resources. Both health and ammo will need to be manually picked up, so no more magical regenerating magazines or health auras that we've seen in the past games, and downed enemies will be lootable for small portions of ammunition too, with ammo reserves not being maxed out whenever you respawn. Spotting won't be quite as spammable as we've seen in the past games, and you'll need to directly see an enemy player first without particle effects getting in the way. And overall, what we can gather is that the gameplay is going to be a lot more strategic than we've ever seen in the past, which should help to increase the skill gap and promote good team play even more. Something that's going to change gunplay in a pretty big way and increase the skill gap even further is the fact that weapons will no longer be accustomed to random bullet deviation, and they'll function in a much more predictable way, with the gun's recoil kicking in a consistent way each time you fire them off, giving them a further level of distinction and helping to get rid of any random unwanted spread. So this means that you can learn the individual characteristics of each gun and use that knowledge against the enemy by countering the gun's kick, making them feel more reliable when they're being fired. Bipods are also going to be more functional than in the past too, being able to work quickly and effectively on more types of terrain and surfaces. And you'll even be able to throw back and shoot live grenades mid-air, causing them to detonate prematurely. Definitely something that should help to cut back grenade spam, giving players a way to counter them. Another pretty big thing that was talked about during the reveal was the inclusion of the toolbox and fortifications to provide players with some new defensive strategies, basically allowing them to build and repair a variety of different structures, both defensive things like cover pieces, barbed wire fences and foxholes, and if you're playing as the support class, offensive things too, like machine gun nests. If a building has been destroyed, you'll now be able to partially rebuild it, and rather than being locked down in a key position on a map, Anti-air guns and stationary turrets can now be towed behind other vehicles too, making them more manoeuvrable, allowing them to essentially change position to create unpredictable fortified defences. This will be a massive way to counter aircraft, as planes will no longer be able to predict exactly where an AA turret will be to attack and destroy it, and if they're being towed by a tank, it'll give the tank driver extra backup when they're advancing on an enemy position, having an extra weapon firing at the enemy to assist it. Now, pretty much everything in Battlefield 5 will have customization options, from the soldier you're running around with to the weapon that they're holding, and you can create a selection of soldiers in a pool of characters called the Company, 
and these said soldiers can be customised with unlockable bits and pieces such as face paint, clothing, helmets and even prosthetic limbs. Vehicles and guns can now be personalised too, adding a sense of ownership to the things that you're using. And these aren't just visual options, as weapons and vehicles can be upgraded upon levelling with progression, to make them even better. This helps to reward players for using specific things, as unlockables will be tied in with the classes, weapons and vehicles that you're using. So if you want a cool looking skin for your M1911, then you can unlock it with progression, giving players a greater sense of satisfaction for playing the game and using certain classes and equipment. As the year rolls on, timed events and challenges are going to be issued to give players more of a reason to keep coming back. Daily orders will be given, which players can set out and complete for in-game currency, which are likely going to be small objectives like killing a set number of enemies with a specific weapon, which sound kind of similar to the time challenges that are issued in Battlefield 1. But bigger assignments will also be issued, that are likely going to take longer amounts of time to complete, challenges to give players something to work towards, and these are going to reward players with rare customization pieces and prizes. These said tasks will be constantly changed as time goes on, offering players with new gear to reward them for completing the new assignments, and these bigger ones are going to be issued in chapters, that are all tied in with certain conflicts in the game. It's said that there's going to be 4 chapters during the first year, with the first focusing on the fall of Europe, including its very own timed assignments and rewards. One of the big gripes a lot of people have with Battlefield 1 is the fact that it had quite a lot of overpowered things in it, making the game feel a bit casual, down to players being able to jump behind the wheel of a ridiculously powerful armoured tank, ship, train or blimp in the form of the behemoth, or pick up additional armour and strong weapons to give them a massive advantage in a gunfight, due to the inclusion of elite class pickups. Well apparently none of that stuff will be making a return in Battlefield 5, so this should put everyone on a more even playing field, making it all seem a bit fairer. So hopefully the game should feel less casual because of this, and you shouldn't be the victim of an unavoidable death as often as in Battlefield 1. Happy days. Another thing that should put a smile on a few faces is the fact that you no longer need to fork out for paid DLC or a premium pass, as any content drops after launch are going to be given to everyone for free. Whether or not this means that there's going to be less content than we've seen in the past is a growing concern, but at least everyone's going to have access to the same amount of content as each other, meaning the fanbase isn't going to get split up this time around. It's also been stated that Battlefield 5 will 100% not be paid to win. I think EA should have probably learnt that lesson by now, and any form of microtransaction that's in the game involving real money will be cosmetic only, so it's not going to affect gameplay in any way, shape or form. And presuming this will just include weapon skins and character customization options, which shouldn't really affect the functionality of the game itself. And last of all, something to jot down in your calendar, the release date, or should I say dates, with the game releasing in October, but on different days depending on the edition. If you want to play the game before everyone else, then you'll need to be an Origin Access member, and then you'll be able to get into the Play First trial on the 11th of October. The deluxe edition of the game will release on the 16th of October, giving you a few days head start over the standard edition, which comes out on the 19th worldwide, which happens to be a Friday, so if you're going for that standard edition on the day of release, then you'll have the whole weekend to bash the game. Perfect timing. So that's pretty much all the main things from the reveal summarised, and hopefully it gives you a good understanding on what's to come. We're likely to find out a lot more during the EA Play event, and no doubt the game's going to be talked about at E3 too, which is just around the corner. I can honestly say that although I wasn't initially thrilled about the reveal event or the trailer that was shown, I don't think the trailer did the game much justice. There's quite a lot of interesting stuff to look forward to here, and I'm pretty excited to see what's around the corner regarding the future of Battlefield 5. Looks like we'll be finding a lot more about the game very soon. So if you enjoyed the video and found it useful, give me a like to show your appreciation, and if you want to see more videos on Battlefield 5 in the future, along with lots of Battlefield 1 content still to come, then subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But anyway, thanks for watching guys, take it easy, and I'll see you in that next episode.